So I'm recording this for people who who miss the meeting or cannot attend. So uh, we started, this is our second time that we are doing the EDIC preparatory course. And we wanted everyone who's preparing for EDIC uh, to, to know what to expect in exam. And that is why this uh, small webinar is there. We have been joined by Dr. Guru Prasad and Dr. Kaval as well, who are course directors for this, our course. And Dr. Shweta is there, who's, who had taken our course last year, last uh, session. So all of you are appearing for EDIC this May. You can either unmute or maybe type. Hi, Kaval. Hi, good evening, Gunjan. Actually, there are few people who are not, uh, you know, uh, I have some, uh, I think Dr. Sukraj is there. The few people whom we need to, you know, give an overview of EDIC also. Okay. Well, EDIC just one just as well. a basic idea. Yeah. Okay. So we, we will maybe then talk about both EDIC 1 and EDIC 2. Actually, we uh, I, I send the flyer as EDIC 2, but maybe we can have a short review of EDIC 1 and EDIC 2. Guru, you want to say? Yeah, uh, nothing uh, specific, madam. I think you can have that spontaneity. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. So EDIC uh, is a European diploma. There are two sessions in the exam. Kaval, add on, if anything. The first exam has MCQs, which are type A and type K. Gradually, they are going down on the number of type K exams and uh, type, uh, I mean, going up on the type A exams. Last two sessions, surprisingly, did not have much on statistics. Otherwise, good number of statistics questions are also there. And uh, uh, it's basically, it's ba uh, basically knowing your deep, in-depth knowledge about uh, critical care in theoretically. That is what is EDIC 1. EDIC 2 is assessing the same in the clinical way, wherein you have three uh, clinical case scenarios and each scenario may have multiple units. So a patient would start from in a arrest situation or in a critical situation and going go to another uh, possibility or another complication and eventually may or may not survive. So they take you through different units and they may ask you questions which may be related to counseling, uh, to medical legal aspects. Uh, right from CPR to medical legal aspects. That uh, is how they assess. And then we have three case-based uh, scenarios, which is more of like uh, table vivas, wherein they are they are three sets. One is images. Images can be anything, X-ray, CT, eco. Then uh, we have... Uh, and uh, then we have uh, loops and curves, wherein uh, the tag reports ventilator loops, hemodynamic graphics will be covered. And last is biochemistry. Dr. Guru has actually made a very good presentation uh, earlier. He wants to share that. So we will just have a quick look at that. Madam, can you uh, uh, give me that share option? How do I do that? I mean, sorry, but I don't. Uh, yeah, no, uh, in there uh, in the share content, you can sh uh, tell all participants or something like that. That option will be there. I have given permission. Yeah, what okay. I'll just open the presentation. <coughs> you you just continue for two, three minutes, madam. So Dr. Guru is basically um, going to in short summarize what to prepare, how to read. He's a very well read person. And uh, he recently cleared EDIC, so he's very much aware of what is what happens in the EDIC exams. Just uh, you know, some two, three minutes you know, before I find the, that presentation. Okay. In the yeah. meantime, uh, maybe I can just have a little word about Kriti Learn. Kriti Learn yeah. is basically a small academy which we started. And we are in the initial phase, which is, in an, which is an attempt to help all the students uh, give their exams, uh, be prepared for the exams. Basically, it is just that you, you know what you're going to get in your exams. So it is it is a base of that. And we are trying our best to fit in things. What we are doing for EDIC 2 and EDIC 1, I will come to it towards the end. But uh, uh, I mean, we are in the initial phase of doing it. Earlier, uh, Dr. Kaval and me have done such education courses with other uh, academies. Uh, but now it is we are doing it together for this critical learn. And Dr. Guru is a great help here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Do you all have any questions? Because Dr. Guru will easily summarize what to read, how, what to expect in the exam, uh, what, uh, what more, how to answer. Everything he is going to summarize. Yeah. Uh, first one, I think uh, I have found the part one thing. I'll share one. Yeah. Uh, should I start, madam? Please, please. A quick one. A yeah. short one because I think more I addict to, yeah, yeah. to candidates. Ajaja. Ajaja. No, basically, yeah. Uh, as you told, uh, part one is about uh, MCQs. And uh, MCQs like uh, uh, A type and K type. Uh, so it is a written exam which uh, 100 MCQs are to be answered in 180 minutes. So there will be approximately 78 type questions where there will be five choices and you have to choose the uh, best uh, choice for uh, that question. And K type will be approximately 30. These are not fixed actually. Sometimes you get 65, 35 and some it will be 70, 30 and all. And in K type, uh, what you will be given four choices and you have to mark true or false. Uh, for each of the choice. So uh, if all choices marked are correct, then you get one full point. If you uh, there is one uh, wrong and uh, three correct, then you get 0.5. So if uh, only uh, two, two are correct, then you don't get any points. Okay. So the details of it, you can find it in the ESSM website here. If you want, I can share the presentation to people. Uh, you can go through it later on also. So basically, uh, it needs at least six months of preparation prior to the exams, uh, exam date. And uh, you, you need to have basic uh, critical care knowledge uh, and you get it through reading through uh, critical care textbooks. Then PACT and ACE modules uh, are also very uh, important, which once you become a member of ESICM, uh, you can go through those modules. Okay. Uh, then, uh, yeah. Uh, again, as I said, uh, uh, there are webinars in ESM websites, which uh, if you go through, they'll be uh, talking close to the guidelines and all. Then uh, you have to be very uh, well acquainted with the landmark trials. And uh, most of your answers uh, maybe uh, have, will be uh, nearer to that because everything what is uh, asked is evidence-based and not practice-based. So, uh, yeah, these are few mock tests which uh, you can take. These are the textbooks uh, which you have to read. These are the textbooks in critical care. Okay, if you want, you can take screenshots of this. Then these are uh, MCQ books uh, uh, by Steve Bennington. And uh, this is one from uh, uh, Dr. Gunjan, which is a very nice book. Uh, even this is a thousand MCQ book is also a good one for part one. Then uh, these are another few uh, MCQ books. Okay. And that's all uh, what I've got of part uh, one. But now what I will do is nah, there are some things which I had to uh, modify. Hmm. And then I'll share it with you. Uh, they can go through it uh, whenever they, they want it. Man. Sure, sure. Maybe we joined, can put it on our website also. They can people can yeah, just yeah, 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 yeah. That will be better, man. Yes, yes. We'll put it on our website. Yeah. So till you find the edict to uh, PPT, I will go. Yeah, uh, yeah. Some things. So how yeah, to prepare? Uh, I mean, looking at the number of books that Doctor Guru Prasad showed, it is very scary. But whether it is part one or part two, trust me, just stick to one textbook which you have read till now. If it is a good textbook, I mean, I have honestly speaking, I read only O's for my exams, whether it was EDIC or whether it was FNB or even IFCCM. So none of them, I really read anything else except O's. It's a fantastic book. The other book that I read was Washington Manual of Critical Care. You may choose whichever book you want to read Fink, you want to read Rippe, you want to read Holland Smith. That's your choice. But stick to one textbook. Don't try to fluctuate from multiple places because critical care is super vast and you definitely have to read the latest developments which has which have happened, the latest guidelines. So reading two or three textbooks is not going to add anything more to your knowledge. 
Okay, if you read the latest guidelines, it will eventually cover up what you have missed from any textbook. Okay, doing a lot of practice is very important, whether it is MCQs or whether it is case based uh, case based scenarios or uh, uh, clinical case scenarios. In either cases, uh, uh, in either cases, you have to. In, in either case, you have to uh, have a lot of practice in what you, what, uh, what, how to appear for the exam. Now, you may also, for the part one, you have a lot of MCQ books, again, which are available. Uh, though my book is very good, I don't deny the fact. And it has, uh, the sales itself has shown them. But it is now six years old. And probably there would be a new edition soon. Uh, but in the last six years, whatever the books are there, it, they are not going to cover up the latest MCQs which comes and come in the exam. So that is why it is important to take the mock test because the mock tests give you the latest MCQs. Okay, coming to the part one preparatory course which we have for uh, from our academy. In that, I have prepared in such a way that we are covering each system, not just the test, but we have made multiple videos. The videos which will kind of make you all revise all the complete subject. Like there is a respiratory system we have almost... 15 to 18 videos or videos on respiratory system itself. So there, which will cover up the important points on each system, like respiratory system, anatomy, pediatric anatomy, which can come as MCQs, bronchiectasis, hemoptysis. So reading, it is a quick revision that you can listen to them in 15 minutes. You can listen to a small section where you cover up the complete anatomy. You listen for 30 minutes, you complete a cover up complete ARDS. So reading ARDS, of course, you may have read, but revising it quickly so that you have you have your subject well, you know, you can answer the MCQs well. That is what is basically covered. And probably soon for Edict 2, uh, I mean, uh, Edict 2, let Dr. Guru first start with what, how to uh, prepare for part 2, then I will continue for part Edict 2. Okay. You found your PPT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please share. Yeah, uh, for part two, uh, uh, it differs uh, from part uh, one being it's a oral or a clinical based exams. And uh, it currently follows a model of an objective structured OSCE, OSCE and a blueprint divided and cobertrize syllabus. This details of cobertrize, you can get it from the ESSM website. Okay. Uh, even the exam guidelines and regulations you can find from the ESSM website. The candidate have to go through three to four clinical case scenarios and three computer based stations biochemistry images, curves, and graphs. So, um, passing is you have to compulsory pass at least uh, two out of three skill stations in both uh, clinical case and uh, computer based scenarios. Okay, if you pass all three in clinical case and uh, you pass only in one uh, computer based, then you are uh, you don't pass, and the same vice versa. So, minimum two in each uh, uh, clinical uh, section you have to clear. Then, uh, 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 usually that, that's what, uh, till uh, after COVID started, it has been on an online format. We don't know how long uh, they are going to carry on that. Okay. And uh, in a clinical case scenario, usually they'll give you a vignette and they, uh, uh, they'll give you five, five minutes time to go through that. Once you've gone through that, then uh, they'll start uh, asking the uh, questions like uh, uh, how uh, usually the first question once you go through that uh, vignette which has been given first so uh, usually the question uh, asked will be uh, to summarize the case so there are four to five answers for each question and uh, they will give one point for each uh, uh, answer okay so uh, only uh, the Problem is we don't know uh, how many questions are there in each, uh, uh, means how many answers are there in, for each questions. That is the only thing which uh, uh, keeps us a little bit uh, confused. Uh, you don't know how much to answer, whether you have to answer all or you have to answer only few. That is one thing which even we are unable to uh, solve. So that will be summarize the case like and what will be your differentials so uh, what is the immediate management if the patient uh, presents with the unconsciousness and also in, invariably you have to answer like uh, first I'll take care of the ABCD and then uh, go ahead. Then they may ask what may be the further, what more investigations you want to do. Or uh, they can ask if the patient is presenting with the uh, agitation, what may be the cause for agitation like that. So the clinical case scenarios uh, go in this way. 
and uh, later after the uh, case initial uh, uh, vnet then the case can go in any direction so a uh, cardiothoracic uh, can go to a neurosurgical one uh, uh, means uh, neurology or a neurosurgical can go to an uh, uh, something like uh, abdomen uh, 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 what, uh, yeah uh, so uh, it uh, it can get connected to uh, any uh, system uh, later on okay so uh, further questions what you can expect is like uh, questions regarding the physiology uh, uh, questions regarding the evidence uh, and uh, there may be uh, they may finally end up in the counseling of the relatives for end of life care or organ donation okay then in uh, computer based stations there are three stations one is uh, 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 lines then uh, uh, graphs graphs and curves then uh, radiology images and then biochemistry okay so uh, approximately you got 10 minutes uh, and there will be about 8 to 12 cases per station and uh, the the issue here is uh, uh, the time constraint see uh, usually when we do uh, when we prepare for the exams we take our time uh, enough time to solve each uh, uh, image or an ecg but there uh, you have constraint with time so you have to be very fast in picking up what exactly uh, are the important uh, 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 what 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 exactly you have to comment on the images so initially there will be an uh, vignette for each uh, uh, C ccs also a uh, cbs so uh, you have to uh, find important points in the vignette uh, sometimes when you read the vignette only you can expect what may be the answers so that also you can get through the practice and once you go through uh, uh, madam's website uh which is very nice it will give you lo a lot of information like how exactly you have to go through okay then uh, in curves of graphs you can expect varieties of ecgs like myocardial infarction blocks drug toxicity ele uh, electrolyte disorders pacemakers and arrhythmia and uh, uh, don't forget that you are appearing for an european exam and uh, uh, what is common there will be asked uh, drug toxicity Uh, uh for example drug so toxicity you may not find uh, uh, aluminum phosphide or op so it will be more of like a beta blocker uh, uh, poisoning alcohol uh, uh, alcohol or uh, this uh, drug intake so uh, they will be more commonly asked than what we find in india then ventilator graphics is so uh, like auto peep trigger cycling plateau pressures so just by seeing the uh, this um, graphics you have to answer those things cvp curves then iibp is also quite frequently asked then icp london bow waves and cerebral auto regulation rrt is quite frequently asked so you have to be whether you are doing crrt in your center or not somehow you have to go through the material on youtube or any other uh, place to get information about it the biggest problem is uh, there is not lot uh, uh, resources for uh ventilator graphics and icp and uh, uh, so you have to uh, try finding in the internet and you have to practice also then in radiology uh, common is ct head uh, uh, traumatic brain injury where you will find uh, different types of hemorrhages ischemic stroke then intracranial hemorrhage hydrocephalus ct abdomen is frequently asked most probably it will be infective like uh, pancreatitis pyelonephritis or cholecystitis then ct chest will be there trauma trauma uh, uh, trauma then infection is common then chest x rays uh, the list is quite extensive but uh, uh, usually they will be asking line and tubes consolidation pneumothorax rib fractures then abdominal x ray there will be like obstructions or hollow viscous uh, perforation there may be rare uh, uh, images like you can uh, find ivc filter then uh, the patient may be on iibp and you may have to identify the iibp tip then ultrasound is quite frequently asked now uh, effusions or an uh, uh, what uh, barcode sign absent lung sliding those things then echocardiography ivcs can be shown tamponades can be shown okay so that uh, how you can practice is radiopedia is one of the very good websites where you can find lot of radiological uh, ima uh, images then biochemistry uh yeah somebody who is quite comfortable with that is okay but uh, 
uh, most of them are not comfortable because the vignettes are quite long. There are a lot of investigations given. But what you have to learn is uh, by practice uh, the pattern recognition. Okay, once you start uh, learning the pattern recognition, then it becomes very easy. Like uh, if, if you are given a scenario like a patient has presented with shock, the patient has been resuscitated, uh, then started on vasopressors, but the patient is not responding. And if there is a biochemical finding like hyponatremia, hyperkalemia, then you should think of additions. So somewhat like that, uh, uh, you have to uh, train your mind to find the small subtle clues which are given in the vignettes. Okay, then uh, there will be ABGs which you have to solve. So you have to learn, uh, uh, practice calculating the anion gap, then the delta gap, and even the strong ion difference. So uh, calculation, uh, you, you can take a calculator, but you don't have time to uh, so much to do a calculation also. So you find your own methods of how you would like to uh, uh, calculate the anion gap. Like, uh, uh, for example, if I uh, tell that uh, the patient is metabolic, uh, there is metabolic acidosis and uh, the uh, bicarb is uh, uh, 20. So you may have to find the compensation. So how you will think of finding a compensation uh, by going through the Winter's formula. So bicarb into 1.5 plus 8 is the Winter's formula. So uh, it is uh, difficult for you to uh, do the multiplication of 1.5 uh, times 20. Though I have given a round figure, it is 4.5. But uh, So what you do is you have to divide it to 1 and half. So if 20 is a bicarb, so half of 20 will be 10. So 1.5 times 20 will be 30. Okay, 20 plus 10, then plus 8. So these are the methods you have to, you only have to find ways so that it is easy for you. Then uh, uh, that's what, uh, electoral abnormalities may direct in favor of uh, DI, SIDH or CSW. Okay, then uh, there are some things which we don't come across re regularly, but they can ask like TEG, ROTEM, then uh, coagulation disorders and common things they, uh, will be tumor lysis syndrome, obstetric emergency is quite frequently asked and uh, re refeeding syndrome. Okay. So uh, how to prepare for the exam? The, just it's the change of format. There is no much. Uh, uh, the critical care is same in part one and part two. Okay. But you need enough time to prepare and uh, you have to be very committed for it. So part one, uh, part two, what they see is uh, they try uh, test your ability to see, uh, ability and knowledge to see whether you, you will be an independent consultant. Okay. I think uh, most of the things I have covered. Yeah, again, it, these are textbooks. These are some internet resources where you can uh, find uh, uh, Deren Physiology is good, Life in Fastlane is good, Up to Date, MCRIT. These are all very good uh, good resources for you to find uh, things. Okay, uh, just few books uh, which, you may have to, uh, which you may have to go through is uh, uh, this Carol Foot is very good for OSCEs, then Data Interpretation by Bala Venkatesh, then uh, this... Uh, um, OSCE's book of final FICCM, uh, then the ECGs by Amal Mottu. Okay. And actually, I have missed one more book. There is a pink book on uh, by the same thing, which I'll share you, uh, share later on. Madam, I'm almost through though, my presentation. So the best line which Dr. Guru said was, you know, the subject is the same. <laughs> I think you need to stop sharing. Yeah, yeah. I so always say that when, 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 when somebody asks me how to prepare for uh, Edic 2, my uh, common uh, thing is from where you stopped. <laughs> so you have to start from where you stopped for Edic 1. Mm -hmm. So the subject is the same and we all know our subject. If we are if we have reached this level of giving Edic 2, it is definitely that we, are, we, have, we know our subject well because Edic 1 clearing itself is not a very easy task. So you have read in depth to clear this Edic 1. But yes, you need a lot of practice to understand what is going to be asked. Because though we are very good at doing clinical work, though we know our subject well, we have limited time to answer and we have to answer in their format. As he said, they may be asking you a question and they want specific answers. So knowing how to answer is very important. And that is why doing practice and doing practice mock tests and understanding how to answer is very important. Okay, and so that is why in uh, the uh, the thing that we have designed in Criticalana three things, 
we have made three sets. We have divided the course in three parts and we have three sets for it. One is we have made videos for CBS learning. So we have videos which will tell you, teach you how to read an X-ray. Not really the basic. I'm not going to teach an MBBS student, but X-ray basic things and give multiple X-rays for you all how to interpret and certain questions on that. Then we have MRI, CT, everything that you think of in CBS, ICP traces, CVP, hemodynamics, uh, whether images, whether loops and curves, we have covered it extensively and we will add on to it in this coming year with more and more things. Eco, USG, uh, Guru Prasad has added videos on Eco and USG to it. So we have covered everything which you can be asked in CBS and multiple videos are there. That will be one set. The second set is practice mock tests, wherein we have dummy examiner. There will be a dummy examiner. There will be two videos which will come in on your screen when you uh, sign in for it. The first video will have a dummy examiner. The second video will have you. So when you start the exam, you the dummy examiner asks a question. You have to pause that question, give your answer, and then again restart the dummy examiner video to listen to the next question. And when you finish your exam, you submit that exam. But the submission, you only have to check because immediately as you submit the exam, you will find another video opening up on your screen, which will be the video with the correct answers. So you can at the same time review what you answered and what was the way that was supposed to be answered. So nobody is going to really mark you in that, that you uh, got so many marks. You can mark your own self and see how you should have answered to score better rather than answering. Because, you know, I can assess you, but at the end of 30 minutes, you don't know what you said. You may feel, yeah, I said the same thing. I don't know why, why I didn't score. Okay. So that is the whole purpose of having this dummy exam. And then we will have live mock tests where in a live examiner will ask you uh, questions and will grade you. So that you will get a proper marking, like how much you scored and there will be live feedbacks from that examiner, how you scored in that. So last time uh, we had a few uh, uh, examiners and Dr. Kaval is also here about telling you about the course. Kaval, you want to give your inputs? I think Gundan, you have covered all the things like I just wanted to stress upon like what is there in Kati Learn. Uh, the candidates appearing should know about it. And further the mock test and whatsoever we are conducting, that will be actually real case based scenarios. Like what yeah. we are dealing with daily in the in our ICUs. And whatsoever images and uh, the loops, curves, whatsoever we are going to discuss will be the live images of the uh, patients we have. So yes. that is what is basically asked there. So we, we need to go to our bedsides, but we need to learn how to appear for the exam. That is more important. And this is what will be the target for this course. Yes. So that is that is the whole purpose of having extensive. We have given extensive uh, coverage of everything that is possible. I also have two candidates who took our course uh, for the last session, Dr. Shweta and Dr. Shibab. Shihab. Uh, I think they can give their uh, inputs. Dr. Shweta, you want to say anything? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thanks so, for coming, Shweta. Hi, hi everybody. Yeah, hi. Uh, very nice to see you, ma'am. Uh, and it was a good uh, discussion by Dr. Guru Prasad, sir. He's our guru, <laughs> as usual. Uh, the thing is, what I'd like to say is make a group. Like, you know, that's what we did. Uh, what we did was we made a group and we used to have discussions on various topics. Like sir said, it's the same topic, which whatever you've read for part one, follow the same thing for part two. Like if you've read it from ACE modules, read your notes, or whichever textbook you follow for part one, read the same thing and revise the topics again for part two. Make a group, discuss, and the mocks will definitely help you because you can open up and talk and it will help you in vocalizing what is going on in your head. And that is very important because many a times what happens, the answer will be there in our head. We know that this is the answer, but we are unable to tell it like in a convincing manner or, you know, tell it out properly. So that we have to practice. And if you can make a group and, you know, have sessions, it can make, it can be a WhatsApp group or you can keep having repeated Zoom calls. And you can just uh, quiz each other. Like if you have a group, you just take up a topic and ask the other person the common questions. Like, okay, this is a patient with shortness of breath. So what will be your differential diagnosis? And then what are the next investigations that you'd like to do in this patient? And what is your probable diagnosis? Then how do you go about it? And what's your, what are the treatment modalities? What are the complications that you can expect in that patient? So all those things, if you keep quizzing each other, then you kind of get uh, used to it, get used to talking. 
yeah and daily mm-hmm. when you're going through your regular cases in the hospital also think about it like a exam case and you know see how uh, how your how the patient is being treated and then you can take a look at the guidelines like when you go through the cases on a regular basis and you have to be thorough with i think renal replacement therapy ards because any key patient can need renal replacement therapy any patient can go into ards later on and then ventilator management and be with very thorough with brain death how do you diagnose brain death and how do you counsel the patient i think they, they gave a lot of stress on counseling and there were many questions on how are you going to counsel this this is the situation uh, the attenders ask you uh, you they were, that you know they want to donate the organ to the patient's friend what do you do you say and you know the the uh, the when whether they they'll be getting some money for the organ donation so these were the questions which they asked us actually this time and other than that uh, like uh, sir has told all the things that you need you can go the books and there's there's so much data and especially you have many internet uh, uh, like uh, deranged physiology is good life in the past lane is good and they have very concise chapters on each of the topics and go through the landmark trials you have to be thorough with that and one more thing what i want to tell you is like um, we, uh, i i had attended almost all the mocks all the mocks were helpful no doubt about that but the difference uh, what i felt during the actual exam was during the actual exam it was like a bombardment of data each patient had so many things going on for them it was a heart transplant patient who was in sepsis he was diabetic uncontrolled diabetes and cervical spine injury and how would you take care of a patient with cervical spine injury and you know multiple things were going on at the same time so what i would like to tell is like when you are uh, attending cases uh, be ready for a lot of data be ready for very long cases now with a lot of complications and with a lot of premorbidities comorbidities etc and uh, what i did was i made a chart like i had made columns on a piece of paper like history uh, then what are the medications that the patient is on and investigations what are the findings at the time of uh, uh admission and what were the complications later on so uh, what happens is you get only the fir- only the first uh, vignette will have the whole history and the subsequent vignettes will be uh, like the later on what happens to the patient and you may not have access to the previous vignette so when you have a piece of paper like this every time they ask you a question you can just go through that piece of paper what the data of that patient whatever you've written and then you can answer and what they expect from you is uh, they expect answers that will keep your patient safe like they don't want you to do any uh, they want they don't want you to answer in such a way that you know you're doing some heroic deed or something but but they want they want to know and ensure that the patient is safe in your hands so that is what they expect and uh, and the other thing is go with a very clean slate like don't have any preoccupied things and they also know that you are under a lot of stress because you are answering the exam and they are uh, uh, they they do like you know they do understand your situation and you need to that's what i said you need to approach the case systematically uh, take in all the data and you need to uh, answer it in a very whole uh, complete manner like you have to take each and every problem of the patient into consideration before you answer anything to the patient Uh, anything about the question and the other thing is if you don't know say you don't know they are quite okay with that like there was this heart transplant patient who had developed sepsis and then they asked me what about the uh, immunomodulators or immunosuppressive drugs would you like to stop them or would you continue uh, what about the uh, like that is what the what the question was and i wasn't very well prepared for that i said sir i do not know maybe i would like to ask an expert so he was quite happy with that answer he said okay good so who would you ask like uh, you don't know about it so who are you going to ask about that so though that's the thing don't bluff if you know you know you tell it if you don't know you can just boldly say you do not know and maybe you would ask or you know you would enquire about what has to be done and the other thing is for cbs practice 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 you have to be so quick especially with biochemistry x ray uh, you have a ga- game plan for like each of the things like for x ray you should know how we are going to read it like a b c d e whatever format which you are used to just have that in mind read it we had a lot of x rays actually we got a lot of x rays during our exam we got very few we didn't get any we had a lot of ventilator graphics and x rays 
we didn't get much uh, many cts or we didn't get any other waveforms like we were prepared for rotem we were prepared for rrt graphs but we didn't get any of those but you you don't know you cannot say maybe you will get them during your exam so you have to be prepared for all of them and uh, yeah you have to be uh, and one more thing what you have to keep in mind is whatever you are prepared for during your mocks and everything it is not going to be the same case scenario or the same question that is going to come with you to you it is going to be something totally different you have to have a presence of mind don't stress yourself too much sleep well the previous day and have a uh, have a fresh mind so that you know you just think that you are in the casualty and you have this patient or you are in the icu you have this patient in front of you what are you going to do to this patient so if you think of it in that line i think the answers will come to you uh, ccs you can take some amount of time to think over it not much but yeah but cbs you have to be like really quick and to be quick you have to actually practice a lot practice images radiopedia has some courses like for uh, emergency i think there is a six month course where they discuss the emergency cts and emergency uh no uh, x rays etc that's a, that's a very good course it's a paid course but it's totally worth it and there are many others like crit iq uh, you can like you know quickly time yourself and do the questions do ecgs what what i used to do was i used to like compulsorily do 10 or 15 ecgs in a day and like tell myself the answers the findings and the answers so so be consistent do everything like you know do ecgs do x rays do cts do all the graphs and solve biochemistry like the uh, calculations have to be like just at the tip of your tongue and you know you get used to it you keep doing it initially you may think that you're being slow but then as you keep doing it regularly you do tend to pick up speed so and be revise uh, i would like to say revise revise well at least in the last one week before the exam whatever you've read revise it well that will really help you because it's 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 a long it's a vast subject and you'd have read it many days back and have like you know a, a, on a, in a diary or in the back of a book just write down where you're going to revise everything from like you know because you might have read each topic from different different places and you might have found one place to be the best which you feel is good or which is kind of short for you to revise from just make a note of that like you know ards i'm going to read from this place rrt i'm going to read from this place so that uh, when you're revising you know where to look for for those particular topics and you can just quickly finish it off and uh, yeah and sleep well the previous day eat well before the i mean at least you know be uh, eat well before the exam and go with a very clean and clear mind i think that should do the trick gunjan ma'am for sharing your experience and your inputs shiba she yeah, have you. you want to share your uh, uh, how your preparation and everything was hi hi actually there is uh, there is nothing much to say because dr shweta have covered everything uh, like actually i started my preparation just uh, 45 days before the exam i was like uh, half minded i am working person so i thought like uh, it will be difficult for me to cover the topics and it's very vast i gave uh, edic one some two years ago so there was a long gap between uh, one and two so i was really confused and i joined the course i think some 30 days before the exam so i had some reading uh, like ace module i just wrote some ace, ace module parts and i wrote that i kept that and start reading then dr gunjan gave some idea then in uh, and the best thing i got from her was like during the exam just act like i am the smartest person and uh, the examiner is the dumbest person that really works seriously when she told i was like okay what is big about that because the examiners needs everything from us like they will be uh, keep on asking questions and uh, we think like okay this is a critical care team so they will be knowing everything so basic dvt prophylaxis they are like the crbsi bundle everything will be will think that it's like no, known for granted but that thing scores mark so like that many thing i got from the critilian team and cb is part like they have like um, much much uh, this thing materials i think last part they added something like that rrt uh, that uh, rotem everything was added in that so i think most of the thing we don't need much background reading everything is included in the package and uh, during the exam the main thing for the exam we should be very cool 
no need to get panic we should be like free minded then only we can score things most of the things like we have seen in the clinical practice so during the working time also the best thing is like we just uh, daily when we see the patient correlate with the exam go it go like it's like an exam okay so it will be easy for us like each uh, bio biochemical parameters abg everything like just coordinate like correlate with the exam so it will be easy for us daily see abgs uh, check for the corrections like it will be hel helpful because in the cbs section we will get one minute and all so it will be very hard for us to uh, ma ma like manage the timing so basically like this criterion helped me a lot like last moment only i joined but it was very easy for me got all the mock tests and the last mock test was like very tough so i thought uh, it will be like very difficult she when before starting only she told me the mock test will be very tough so, to get us prepared but it was like okay because from that day two days ago i gave the mock test so from that time i was like fully prepared from i i think two days before i stopped reading and all because i was fully like okay i'll give the exam i'm ready for the exam like that like that i felt ecg is and all read as, as much as you can from the internet we will get so much sample so uh, go go through the ecg because it's we can't say like this thing will come anything can happen like uh, ecg will come x rays i think more than five or six x rays came last time so many x rays like next next like everything was x ray i was like when they started i thought some ct will come some mri will come nothing came all x rays came and no hi fi hemodynamic monitoring nothing came all basic basic thing etco2 monitoring that uh, one etco2 uh, graph came and many ventilator parameters came then in bio uh, this thing biochemistry i think one uh, vancomycin trough value question came and one antibiotic uh, um, one, one esbl coverage antibiotic came other than that everything was like usual usual question scheme so it's it was okay for me i think retilen will be helpful for you to just start with and to end up with the thing and you will get scored i think thank you thanks thanks for coming dr shyab dr akshata is also here you are there akshata because she wanted to leave akshata sorry Dr. Vignesh is here. Vignesh, you can unmute and say. I think he left. So, Dr. Vignesh has a. Uh, uh, so he left, but he left me a message to convey to you all that on a daily basis, you all should have a habit of solving ECG, X-rays, ABG, biochemistry, and we should think and answer like a consultant. So, what Dr. Shahab said, that is what I told him uh, before the exam. that uh, you should uh, uh, basically answer them as if you are the consultant in the icu and your examiner is a junior with you all so when you answer when you tell your junior you tell everything okay you don't miss out on small small aspects because your it is a dumbest jun junior which you have but when you answer to examiner you assume that he has understood a few unspoken words which you you which you may have missed so that is what on a daily basis we have to make a habit that we speak everything out and that will give prepare you all well for your final exam also mock test as i said is very important that you all attend whichever you all choose i i mean of course for me critical learn is the best so this time uh, we have prepared it as i said in three sets one is we have we have made videos which will cover completely all the cbs right from icp tracing to tag rotem uh, to uh, x rays ecgs mri eco uhc everything that can come in a cbs uh, maximum that can come Uh, we will add on to something related to ecmo troubleshooting this time which we did not add last time we wanted to but we didn't so uh, we couldn't rather so we'll add on to that this time and uh, then we have practice mock test which you can assess for yourself how to uh, answer in the exam what you answered and what you should have answered so you can simultaneously or alternately play both the videos at the same time that you answer yourself when you answer your video gets recorded and it is saved on the server temporarily once you close the window the server is uh, deletes your video so your video is there on the server and the right video is there on the same screen below that so you can just play first question listen to your answer and then listen to the correct answer so you know where you made your mistake and finally we have live mock test wherein our examiners our senior uh, examiners will assess and tell you all uh how to uh, one of what mistakes you get made or how you can clarify your answers bit best so every step is very important when you uh, give the exam uh, i mean uh, so that is how it is of course your own preparation will matter 
again i say don't get panicked with the thousand books that you all have if you have read a good textbook if you have worked in an icu it works really well even if i am the best in the ecg and i may have written the best ecg book and i can answer every ecg on a clinical round but maybe in an exam i do not get that ecg because there may be some subtle things which i may miss i have a mind block so going with a clear mind is very important don't get panicked more and more practice will just make your mind aware or of what to see in that ecg so that's the whole purpose of taking the mocks or taking the reading more and more so start preparation for today there is still a long time to go and uh, we have a telegram group you can join where we have uh, decent discussions dr vignesh has also written that we should answer like a critical care consultant right from the immediate plan and even evaluate nutrition physiotherapy and dvt prophylaxis should attend mock tests so this is what he has written to me on a personal message maybe i should just put that on for everyone to read maybe everyone can read your cha uh, chat this is what he put to me before he left okay. so i'm just adding a link to a telegram group uh, if uh, if you all can join for updates and maybe we can have some discussions there and of course i will put up updates about a critical learn course as well just a second so this is a link to the telegram group you all can always click and join it any questions from your end we are here to answer another thing which i wanted to uh, tell is yeah from uh, from today uh, from tomorrow morning only when you go to the hospital you have to voluntarily look at what you are doing because that's what i told for the first question it will be invariably a b c d which you have to answer and uh, uh, you may think that uh, uh, starting oxygen may not be important to answer but uh, uh, mind it that it may carry one point so these are the easy points which if you would have answered you would have got or else you will miss so uh, when you are in the casualty or in the emergency department so you see, because it is see when the patient comes to the casualty it is very common that the, uh, you will uh, put monitors okay you will start them on oxygen you will take uh, an uh, iv line then when you take iv line you will draw uh, blood for investigations isn't it then uh, at the same time you will be assessing the airway breathing and circulation so uh, you have to be voluntarily trying to practice that in your mind that 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 only will be your answer for that in first vignette especially for first vignette this is what they are going to answer if you miss telling that you will not start oxygen then there there are chances that you may be losing a point if you don't tell that you are you will start an iv line you may say fluid resuscitation but how are you are going to do the fluid resuscitation only after you start an iv line you are going to do a fluid resuscitation so there also you may miss one point okay then applying monitors that also may carry one point then Uh, taking blood for investigation that will uh, means you will get the next answer answer for that uh, thing drawing blood means then you know why you are drawing blood for cbcs and all so these are the very small things but they matter a lot because each point is important for you to clear the exams i am done madam and another point which you need to remember is though we have vignettes you know every question has its own marks so they are they are literally like you know objective assessment so first question may have five marks even if you have not answered the first vignet completely do not panic because if you may answer all the further vignets very comfortably and you may still pass the exam because and in fact every question even if you have answered wrong in the first question just ignore that because they have specific answers written there they are not going to assess you mainly on what you are or what mistakes you make make though they have a very 5% marks for assessing a individual whether that individual can pass or not but if you are not grossly wrong or don't get panicked with the fact that you could not answer this vignet or you could not assess something you know so don't worry about that fact just take every question as a new opportunity to pass the exam and answer it yeah and as uh, shweta told about uh, 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 writing uh, uh, 
in a piece of paper what the first vignette is and all it is very important because uh, they may in the vignette they may say that uh, this patient had undergone a surgery who presents with the uh, he had undergone an uh, 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 surgery for his head injury okay and now he presents with the uh, stroke okay so it is very important because your one of your treatment for stroke, ischemic stroke will be thrombolysis so uh, if by if the thing goes off your mind that this patient was a post trauma uh, head injury operated patient and said that you were going to thrombolysis then it becomes a blunder and coming out of that blunder becomes uh, very uh, difficult so if you had written that this patient is post surgery or on anticoagulants then uh, th- looking at that you may not answer that thrombolysis is an option so uh, the vignette has each word in the vignette has got its own importance okay so that's how you have to look at the vignette and that that's a good point which uh, dr shweta pointed out yes madam so if we have no questions i think we can conclude we will be saving this video and putting it up the link up on multiple channels in case any of your colleagues or friends are missed you all can always take it uh, join it and uh, join our telegram group i have put the link in the chat chat box so that will definitely uh, help uh, uh, i mean having further discussions and maybe we can continue that with the active discussions about many cases and interesting ecgs excess which you can also put up and we can always discuss on that group so it has 500 plus people already who are all edic aspirants kind of or everybody is actually a critical care student whether it is edic or uh, something else it will always be very good to have the active uh, discussion there okay. and all the best for your exam and we hoping to look you look forward to you for our critty learn preparatory course thank you Thank you, Doctor Guru. Bye. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you. Bye, man. Good night, man. Good night. Yeah.